Hi everyone, it's Craig here from Creating Wealth Through Property. Now, I was chatting with a friend of mine the other day and we were talking about SEO. So SEO, what happens is you get this phone call from someone with an international number and they go, bee, 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 I know, do you own this website, blah, 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 blah. And we've all had this, haven't we? Well, what we've all done there is we've either done nothing or we've gone with someone and they've burnt us. It's happened, it's happened to me, I'm sure it's happened to you as well. So chatting with this mate of mine, SEO, and he actually has a business that is number one for Melbourne SEO organic in Melbourne. That's pretty good, and he's a local boy, he's not one of these uh, international dialing people, knows what he's on about. So. I thought I'd get him on the line, and you may have seen him before. His name is Prosper, and he is brilliant. And I love the name of his company too. And it is, oh, actually, pipe on in here, Prosper. It is Live Long Digital, correct? Live Long Digital, yes, absolutely. <laughs> Cracks me up because I'm a bit of a sci fi fan myself. So it's live long and prosper and if my wife was here she could do the little spock thing with the fingers but not me yeah okay so <laughs> some people can do it and i can't but anyway <laughs> i would love to hear more about this seo stuff and this facebook stuff prosper can you help us out a bit please absolutely uh, um craig thank you so much for having me on i would have you know right off the bat that I actually believe that um, if anyone is running an online business, it has to be profitable and they actually have to enjoy working in that uh, business. And that's the reason why, um, you know, we've created the programs that we've created and also help people uh, using uh, strategies such as uh, search engine optimization and other digital marketing strategies. All right. So, I mean, I don't know what you quite know about um, search engine optimization, but I'll, I'll let you know what it actually helps you uh, to achieve because a lot of people have it all misconstrued. It's not their fault. It's the misinformation um, that is being paddled on the phone every single day uh, that is annoying them. But um, Can I I'll just interrupt and ask a question, Prosper? Yes. yes. Frankly, I don't want to know anything about SEO. I really don't. It's just an acronym. It's a thing out there that people talk about. It's not something that I want to know. I want to know that someone can take care of this stuff and it's going to bring me in leads and customers. Does it do that? Absolutely. Absolutely. The thing is, um, we, we have a very uh, wrong interpretation of what SEO now is than what it was before. So I think I really wanted to open up that, um, you know, uh, explanation first uh, so that people get an understanding because yes, you will get the leads. Yes, you will get user uh, friendly websites, but you need to also understand if you're going to let it, let somebody uh, do it for you, you have to have some sort of knowledge of what it is that they're doing because I can just literally present back your site as it was and you wouldn't even notice the difference that um, you know some search engine optimization has been done to your site there. So first of all, SEO actually helps businesses to create fast, robust, and user-friendly websites that are actually ranking higher on search engines. Google absolutely wants that their end user, which happens to be your customer, has the best experience when they're looking for content on the internet. Now, if your website is fast to load, is mobile friendly, and is providing the right kind of information for the end user, then Google will favor you, um, you know, in the search engine uh, ranking there. So that's one thing that a lot of people really have to understand. It's really about our clients. Are they getting our message? So there's a way of you putting content out there in the way that you understand it or in the way that your customer perceives that um, information. So that's what SEO actually helps you to actually speak in the context of how your audience um, perceives you. Now, did I hear right recently that 
it's Feb coming towards the end of February now that yes. in March Google's changing their ranking strategy again and that if your website takes longer than three seconds to load, forget it, you're out of here. <laughs> you're never going to be seen on Google. Is that about right? Absolutely, absolutely. They constantly change their algorithms, which is what every other big, um, you know, uh, entity does. Facebook all, all, all recently changed their algorithm as well. So they, like I said, are in favor of the end user. So if your page is slow to load and the pictures are heavy and the content is not congruent to the kind of keywords that your audience is actually particularly searching for then obviously um, you would be taken out of the mix um, I will give you a very practical example Google is like a library so every time you go to a librarian and then you tell them you want a, a book on creating wealth your website is that book so the librarian is going to give you the most appropriate book with the right kind of information that would suit your kind of pain at that particular moment. And the librarian has to be confident that they are giving you the right book at that particular moment. So you want to make sure that the cover of your book, the wording, the pages are all good that the end user is going to enjoy reading your particular uh, piece of content right there, which happens to be your website. So the SEO stuff, it actually goes into each of the pages that you have as well. Does Absolutely. It? Right. Yes, it okay. does. So there is what is called on-page SEO, which basically helps you to create um, faster loading pages, which also helps you to bring out the um, exact, you know, brand message that you want to bring out there. And it also helps... Um, you know, the audience be aware of the kind of service that you are peddling out there. So we might know what wealth creation is. We might know what we're selling, but the end user probably has a different words to it. The end user has a different understanding to what it is that you do. So if your search, um, if your pages are actually outlined in a way that um, even the search engine uh, crawlers or the spiders can read them, that means the layman um, can also actually read and understand what it is that you're trying to tell them or trying to sell them. Right. A again, this is something that I see a lot and I hear a bit about, but it's not something I've got so much to do in my business. I've got so many people to talk to and deal with. This is not high on my agenda. Uh, understanding this or doing it, why would I actually do it? What What's the benefits to me of All right, even knowing anything about it? Let's face it. We are in business to get customers, right? And the main reason for you to actually have a website is to stand out from your competition and to deliver your message in a way that you have a platform that people can always come back to, right? So why then invest thousands of dollars in trying to bring your audience to you yet you don't have information for them to read all right so if your business is not i mean your website is not seo optimized you will not be able to bring more customers and you won't be able to grow within that business as fast as you possibly are doing right now. I'll take a specific example of your business. If somebody comes in and wants to know about wealth creation, they buy a house with you today, it's not like they're gonna come back again and buy that house tomorrow, no. But you constantly as a business have to be searching for new customers, but those customers also have to be aware that you are the right kind of person that would serve them with the need or the pain that they actually have. So. SEO is the most efficient, affordable and marketing strategy that actually happens um, and exists on the market today because you are bringing customers that are actively looking for your product or your service by typing in the actual keywords onto Google. So you're saving yourself a lot of um, you know, money um, by you know, investing in an SEO strategy instead of you hoping and praying all spraying and praying with your methods and um, hoping that people are going to come to you because you would not know when your customers are ready but when they are ready what's the first place they go to they turn to google so you will be spending a few hours of your time and your energy and small amount of money um on seo but it will be giving you 
targeted traffic to your website and eventually more customers and you will be getting maybe double the business that you're having at the moment than any other uh, marketing tactic you'd ever use. So instead of, I use Facebook a lot. So instead of Facebook, which is a pushy in your face type stuff, inter it's an intrusive uh, advertising. Right. You're, you're talking about when people are ready, oh, I need to find out about this, bling, bling, bling. And that's when they're the prime as customers. Well, absolutely. Right about now, if you're looking at Facebook as your strategy, Craig, I would, you know, with true love and respect for your work, advise you to reconsider because Facebook now has altered their algorithm in as much as business, um, you know, pages or posts do not venture into the news feed uh, unless you've boosted them or paid for them. Now, that's a reactionary type of um, advertising and how many times have you come across and um, you know spoken to somebody and they're ready to buy there and there? Whereas if somebody goes on to Google, they are automatically they have a bleeding neck that really needs to be solved. So they need that information there um, faster than you know them hoping, but then you as a business person hoping they will see your ad, see your content in their newsfeed, and then consider wanting to purchase a house. So you are dealing with people that are, you know, ready to buy then or ready to engage. And that then gives you better conversion rates because when your website is loading faster and it's easy to read and to surf and it's easy to display properly on different types of devices, including maybe your mobile or your tablets, which is what SEO really does. They're easy to, to navigate. And when your visitors come in, do you know what I mean? They become loyal customers or subscribers because they're enjoying what they are finding, um, you know, on your website, on your platform, instead of them having to look you up on Facebook of which they might not find you. So the websites are not dead after all. I thought Facebook had taken over everything. You, you might be correct by saying Facebook would have taken over, but they yanked um, the dummy, you know, two months ago. And I would strongly suggest that if business people are really looking to create uh, businesses that are profitable and enjoyable, they should actually start investing in a platform that they actually own. Facebook is rented um, audiences. It's rented property. They constantly change, um, you know, their algorithm in as much as right now, you can't even reach the audience that you would have built. You might have 15,000 or 1,500 uh, followers on your Facebook, but none of those people get to see your content when you think they actually are. Um, Facebook was designed as a social media site, which means people are coming to see Aunt Sally's photos and how her cat is growing instead of finding out how they can actually increase their wealth and leave a lasting legacy. Nobody's thinking of legacy when they're on Facebook. Mm, Facebook's a bit like the Melbourne weather. It changes multiple times of the day, doesn't it? Without notice. <laughs> Absolutely. Because when you've got your own platform, um, it makes it a whole lot easier to direct your audience towards, um, you know, making transactions with you. On Facebook, um, your newsfeed right now might have your previous clients, your new clients, all in the same newsfeed, an advert from, you know, uh, 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 um, some sort of company. Uh, you've got your auntie Sally, who's also in the newsfeed. So people are being bombarded with different aspects of their life right in the, in, 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 the, in, in, in the same five seconds. So it's not going to be easy for them to actually make a concrete decision to say, I'm going to follow through and listen to what wealth, um, creating wealth has to say today when there's a funny video that has 500 more likes um, down there that is already um, ready to pop up as soon as they just scroll past what your, your, your post is like. But if you've got your own website that has the right kind of content, that is, um, you know, the content that educates your audience on what you really um, can provide for them, what you can do for them, and you've got tools and things that are actually helping them by actually helping them, then they get to know, like, and trust you. We all know that people do business with those they know, like, and trust. Absolutely. Well, I guess that's why we're talking with you, isn't it?
because we know not I can trust you. So yes, <laughs> I guess that's why we're chatting. But let me ask you this one. That, okay, so I go and I get the SEO done. Do I just tick that off my list, all done, walk away, happy as Larry, and the customers just keep flooding in? Is that what happens? Well, I wish it was as easy as that, that you can sit and forget. With SEO, you can up until a certain stage, all right? So you might be working on three or four different keywords at that particular time. If those keywords are already ranking, you need to shift your strategy so that you attract different um, keywords, all right? So it's not a matter of you just setting and um, you know forgetting. You also need to be having your ear on the ground, asking your audience or your customers, what are they actually searching when they um, reached out to you so that you also start targeting on those keywords. So it is um, an investment. Once it's done, it's done. It can last for a lifetime up uh, unless Google decides to change the way they do business. But also with the way things are changing these days, we've got Siri, we've got um, Alex, Alexa, or all the voice activated um, means of searching. You also need to make sure that your website is still found when your audience is searching. And also um, a lot of cars are now GPS activated and maps are also something um, that people really need to look at. So if your location is um, you know, determined by people actually reporting to a premises, you need to make sure that it is locally um, optimized so that people can search for you when they look for a dentist near you or um, your service near them or maybe a restaurant near them, um, et cetera, et cetera. So seriously, we'll just turn the camera off here for a second and the microphone's off. Do you seriously know what you're talking about and understand <laughs> all this stuff? It's huge. <laughs> and you wonder why we don't want to talk, why we don't understand it. All we see is SEO and then we just blah. So, okay. <laughs> It's like anything, um, Craig, you know, like food. The moment you, you, you get into a different type of food, maybe you're vegetarian or maybe you're vegan or maybe you are some sort of, um, you know, different lactose intolerant or gluten-free. The moment you open the Pandora's box, depending on, you know, what you're interested in knowing, you will find as lo a lot of information regarding that aspect. And that's mm -hmm. the benefit of what SEO does. People are coming to the internet to get information. So if your website is strategically positioned to be providing that information, people get to know, like, and trust you. And we do understand people do business with those they know, like, and trust. So yeah, it is a passion of mine. I, <laughs> I live, breathe, eat, um, you know, what is happening in the search engine, um, you know, walled there and i read quite a lot uh craig so mm -hmm. it, that does help too well a mate of mine rang me up yesterday and he he gave me this website that i think is just brilliant it's called answer the public.com right yes and people have got look that up answer the public.com and watch out for the angry man Prosper's friendly, but this guy's angry on the other end of this website. It's a ripper, so take a look at it. Okay, Prosper, so tell us, wh what do we do? Do we do SEO? Do we do Facebook? Do we do a combination of both? Where do we go? Right, absolutely. So you've got to have a clear understanding of who your audience actually is and how they find who you are, okay? People, because people don't know that. How are they supposed to do that as well? Do you, do you have strategies for figuring that sort of stuff out? They, there are strategies um, out there, heaps of them. The first one is to genuinely ask your audience, how did you find me? Or what is it that made you want to look for my service? People are more than happy to tell you why they came across your work or how they got to hear about you. So maybe you might have uh, referral programs. Maybe you might know people like how we know each other and refer people to, to each other, whichever way. Make sure what you do is known out there. Make sure you're standing out from your competition and increasing your customer base and 
working with the people that are actually paying you money because we might assume that we know who our audience is but it might be the other way around okay i go past a dental surgery um here in manda every single day they're a dentist and um outside of them they have a sign that says new patients welcome I almost want to ring it and throw it into the road or throw it into the bean because I would never classify myself as a patient. So obviously that dentist is not talking to me. I understand who they're trying to attract, which is new people, but I would never identify myself as a patient. So that doctor dentist has clearly not uh, done their research as to figuring out what the audience he's trying to attract identifies themselves as. Because if he says, new SEO experts, welcome, I would walk in there. Um, if they say, new wealth creators, welcome, I would walk, you would walk in there, all right? So if you really particularly understand how your audience, uh, you know, uh, refers themselves or understands who they are, you will win this game. So it doesn't matter whether you're on Facebook, whether you're on um, Instagram or you're on LinkedIn, if you understand um, your audience, if you've got a message that goes to a particular market, you'll always be winning um, with this um, you know, online strategy. So first of all, find out who is the devil you're after. Well, now everybody on Create Wealth Through Property, well, forget about Prosper and I'll just tell you, I set him up there to give you a lot more value. You need to know your avatar, you need to know your customers, and the way you do it is by talking with them and asking them. So we just slipped that one in there. No extra charge, Prosper? <laughs> I should have known I was being led in. But now that you've mentioned, I just really want to leave with um, one of these uh, statements that I usually say. Whenever you are going out, looking out for a marketing strategy, all these other things are bells and whistles. You should just remember three M's. That's your message, your market, and the media now your message is basically what it is that you sell who you sell it to and why they need to buy it off of you all right you need to be very particular and exact because our audience now has so much um you know choice as to where they can get their information from all right once you figure out what your message is marry it with a particular market sometimes some people talk about a niche or some people talk about, um, you know, uh, your audience or are you your vertical or are you going horizontal with the people that you're searching for? Try and aim for people that have the same worldview as you. As I mentioned earlier on, um, there's different aspects to food these days. So you might be, um, you know, a, a gym person, but your audience is all vegan and you are seen eating a piece of meat at, um, you know, at Fridays or some other rest what that does is it takes away that credibility that those people already had for you so once you know who your audience is what their world view is it'll be easier for you to marry your message to them um, you know there and then you speak to the right kind of person with the right kind of pain giving them the right kind of product and the payoff that they're actually looking for and once all that is in place the media can always vary so what you were mentioning there the Facebook, um, you know, the SEO, newspapers, blogs, these videos, this is all media. It can all change. You know, back in the time I would have been sitting in your studio right now, but I'm not. I'm in my office, you're in your place, and we can all do this. So the media is now allowing that to happen, but it never was like that five years ago. So things change in the media part, but the message is still the same. The market is still the same. That's an incredible value and absolutely brilliant words there, Prosper. It really is. I very much appreciate you taking the time out today to, well, enlighten me, and I'll have to go and have a cold drink after this and cool my head down. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, it's been great to have you on. Now, just to be sure, so you do SEO, you do Facebook, and you do the media stuff as well. Is that right? Absolutely. But my main thing that I really want people is to help them create their message 
and for that message to be found by their audience. And we use that and we do that using uh, search engine um, you know, practices. That then spills into uh, social media because they all work hand in hand, but social media is not any greater than what search engine optimization would do if you really want to get results and have a business that's profitable and enjoyable. So just a thought as we're going through here, would I be correct that if I was a Facebook person or a Google AdWords person or whatever marketing thing I want to use, if I had my SEO stuff done and you found the best words and the best keys and that identify my market, could I steal those and stick them into these other platforms and use them there as well? You, you could if you're going to be running Facebook, um, Facebook ads. The reason why SEO is so good is we're getting raw data from the people that are actually searching. But if you're going to be advertising on Facebook, you're speculating. Does that make sense? You're assuming yes. that small businesses are the people that want to create wealth. What if Sally just walked into some money and has a bit of cash to spend on the property? You won't, your ads won't reach out to them, but they can search on Google to find out who is a wealth creation specialist. So with SEO data, you can actually then go in and find out is this males or females or what age group are they? It gives you all that data of every person that would have come through to search for your uh, information. So it is a really cheap way to actually beat the system on the social media there because with Facebook, you're speculating, you're hoping and you're thinking that based on what you know, this is the kind of person that might want to see this ad. But what if Sally has just walked into some wealth and they're looking up on, on Google? So, so the, the optimization is better qualified leads as well then by the sound of it. Absolutely. You get yeah. better qualified leads. You get a lot of uh, targeted traffic to your website and essentially people that would actually stay for more. Mm -hmm. you know, and it works better than any other business um, uh, give, um, you know, tactic out there because you get better conversion rates. If somebody comes on to, uh, to search for something online, they seriously have a bleeding neck and they want that problem solved. But if I come across your your Facebook page, it's like I was eating ice cream. Now you're asking me to check my finances. Uh, what is easier for me to keep licking my ice cream, isn't it? But if the ice cream melts, and I really need to check my finances, I go onto Google and I'll be like, what is that company that came up? And if you're not there to be found where your customers are searching and your website is not loading any faster and it's not easy to read and people cannot surf on it and it's not displaying properly on most devices or tablets, then you would have lost out on that uh, person that you would have uh, incited or interested on social media. So sometimes you can use social media to a, you know, to, to, to initiate the desire that people would then search in their own time, because you would find that on social media, people are browsing through during their break or they're on transit or they are in between picking up their daughter from school, whichever way. So there's no way they would go through and, and follow through unless they're actually sitting down on their tablet and they're actually looking at wealth creation um, tactics and which your website would then um, come about. That's where you get a lot more loyal customers because they have had time to actually have a look at what you've got to offer and they actually subscribe and they will actually return because when somebody has searched for something on, on Google, have you ever noticed if you type in uh, maybe, you know, creating wealth or whatever it is, Google will keep giving you back those results that you have been searching for before. So once somebody has found you, somehow you're already creating brand awareness because you constantly are going to be appearing, um, you know, when they're searching there. Beautiful. Thank you, Prosper. Really appreciate your time today and the enormous value. Uh, I think we've already closed this session once already. So this time we'll do it. We'll do it properly. We'll just hit the button. But thanks again. Uh, just one other thing before I go. I'm going to try and talk you in after this session to give away a couple of bonuses down below at the end of this video. I'll put a little thing on with, we can hook across to a website and maybe get a bonus. Absolutely. 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 Ripper. Yes. I always <laughs> like to give more. 
<laughs> Very well, thanks. Well, thank you so much for having me, Craig. Great to have you, mate. See you soon. Bye. Bye for now.